Hi, my name is Rich Lilly with Project Leadership Associates. Today we're going to be talking about Azure Remote App. Today IT faces many challenges when delivering applications to clients outside their office. Uh, in this case, we look at bring your own devices where users are bringing their own devices and trying to access corporate applications. We need to respond dynamically to business requests for seasonal, temporary workers, outside vendors, or potentially new employees. In addition, we also are looking greatly to reduce overall infrastructure costs and move that capex over to an operational or opex expense. In a lot of cases, we also have to provide access to legacy applications that have been around for many, many years that can't go away. And in addition, we also have to protect these corporate resources as they go outside the corporate walls. We can accomplish this with Azure Remote App. In this case, Windows Azure Remote App provides a Windows application experience uh, based on the remote desktop services platform built into Server 2012 and Server 2012 R2. In this case, we can leverage this platform to provide global scale and availability of applications outside the organization. Uh, this can also provide disaster recovery for access to these applications outside the organization as well. So what is Azure Remote App? Uh, Azure Remote App allows us to deliver RDS or remote desktop services of applications specifically on Microsoft's Azure platform. Uh, this provides access to Windows, iOS, Mac OS X, as well as Android devices, so it's truly cross-platform. In addition, this is all delivered via Microsoft's remote desktop protocol via RemoteFX, uh, providing a very rich and enhanced experience with a low overhead, low bandwidth access to these applications. In addition, we can also implement this without uh, a high capital expense. Without having to own the infrastructures to support this remote desktop services environment, we can truly make this a lot more scalable and meets our business needs as well as our, our corporate cost constraints as well. And finally, this allows us to uh, provide the flexibility of a, either a hybrid or a cloud deployment model. In this case, there's two different deployment methods. Uh, we can deploy either a remote app to a complete cloud-based deployment. In this case, we can leverage Microsoft's pre-created images that include things like Office 365 and other core applications. The benefit here is we have rapid provisioning because we have these images that are already based in a specific gallery that are offered up to others. In addition, there's also automatic maintenance on these images as well. So we don't actually have to maintain the operating system that these images sit on, much unlike what we have to do on premises today. Also, we can leverage our corporate account or our Microsoft Azure AD account credentials to log into these services and launch these applications as well. The other deployment choice is our hybrid deployment. In this case, this is fully customizable. We can launch and install our own corporate applications, customizable apps, and the operating system to meet our group policies or our corporate compliance as well. IT also has the ability to manage these images and apply updates at their own will to meet, again, the corporate compliance on that side. In addition, we also have full access to network resources. So if we're not deploying backend servers to support these client, uh, client installations, uh, we can actually connect that back to our corporate resources, which may be our SQL databases or application servers. As well as the, the remote app cloud deployment, we can also support user login with our corporate credentials uh, or federated with Azure Active Directory. Let's take a further look at the cloud deployment in detail. In this case, this actually shows an architecture of a true cloud-only deployment. We have our outside users connecting via remote desktop services to our sessions that are in Azure. In this case, that user is presented with a 50 gig persistent disk, and we can see we're publishing the core applications like Microsoft Office, Notepad, Calculator, et cetera. Our environment is completely contained in the Azure platform today. As you can see, the authentication mechanism is happening either through our Microsoft account or through our Azure Active Directory, which can either be federated or non-federated through our directory sync process. For a hybrid deployment, it's a little bit different, where we can actually connect our on-premises infrastructure to these services to support front-ending those applications, whether it's in a production scenario or potentially even as an only disaster recovery scenario. In this case, we can leverage some of the hybrid networking functionality of Microsoft's Azure platform by leveraging a site-to-site -site VPN tunnel to connect those resources. In addition, we also provide hybrid management to manage these applications as well as our on-premises environment in one pane of glass through our standard monitoring and management tools. 
In this case, you can see the hybrid deployment in detail. The biggest change here is the fact that we do have that little lock that shows our Azure site-to-site -site tunnel between our Azure infrastructure and our on-premises infrastructure. In this case, again, we have the, the ability to not only access our line of business applications, the back-end application servers, but also file shares and data as it resides in our on-premises infrastructure as well. In this case, because we are accessing corporate data, we do need to leverage our DirSync process uh, to leverage our user corporate credentials to access this information and resources. A couple different things that go on when we want to select, look at selecting our specific deployment options. As, as mentioned previously, our cloud deployment option uh, already has our image with our Office 2013 Pro Plus pre-installed. So if you are a customer that has Office 2013 today, this should be a no-brainer. In addition, it offers identity flexibility to leverage either a Microsoft account or a corporate account if you're not leveraging directory sync as well as rapid provisioning of our servers to so support additional sessions on the fly very quickly. In addition, we're also offering automatic maintenance as well as turnkey solution for our session host images. The other option is a hybrid deployment. In this case, we have allow secure access to data or resources on premises, as well as provide corporate Active Directory based identity, as well as be able to provide access to our different data in the back end, including our hold to our corporate IT policy and group policies as well. One important thing to think about is the patching and updates. When we look at that template image that Microsoft is offering today, they are automatically maintaining those images, moving sessions off and on as needed. Uh, in this case, the latest operating system and application updates are rolled out on an ongoing basis, including the Office platform, and you always have the latest version of Office Pro Plus. When you upload a custom image for your applications, uh, you at that point take ownership over the, the applications and resources on that server. Uh, in this case, you are actually uh, managing those servers either with WSUS, Configuration Manager, Group Policy, or potentially System Center. Uh, in this case, we also have the ability to, to leverage our image-based updates with our new templates. So again, we can dynamically upload a new image and then propagate that over to the profile and update that as needed, much like how a golden image works in other situ situations and platforms. Microsoft is really looking to innovate based on customers' feedback. Uh, so what they've done, especially in the last couple months here, uh, we've looked at multiple release updates for remote desktop clients, which have been updated for all the platforms we've talked about, multiple iterations of Azure remote application template image, so we can take that back to different versions and make sure that Microsoft is patching that appropriately. Clients are connecting exclusively over HTTPS now, so we have a secure uh, SSL access. Microsoft added the ability to add a custom template image for cloud deployment, as well as creating a custom image of your own completely in Azure IA, so we can do the complete creation management process within the Azure platform, as well as added the ability to deploy an existing Azure VNet and connect that to your, uh, your infrastructure as well. In addition, just in March alone, Microsoft has added about 10 new core functions. I'm not going to uh, go through them all, but in, in this case, Microsoft has added an Office 365 platform image updated with the latest server updates. Um, the iOS client, as well as the Android client and Windows Phone client have all been updated, and also some various patches and changes have been made to improve performance and overall experience as well. Let's take a look at the remote app configuration. We're gonna go ahead and log into our Azure management portal here and go take a look at the remote app section of our page. In this case, we can see that I have just a default apps collection with my standard Office 365 cloud only image. In this case, you can see the collection is active. We get the remote desktop client URL that's being connected to. We also, in this case, attach us to either a virtual network in Azure. So if we have other Azure only resources deployed, we can connect to file servers, application servers, or other pieces, uh, other components as well. We also have the ability to upload our own custom template images that, that, like we've talked about earlier as well. So in this case, if we've either created one on premises and uploaded that file, or if we create one in Azure through a process that Microsoft has added recently, we can add that template and leverage that template for our remote desktop services collection. Let's take a look at this from the end user's perspective. In this case, we've already launched our Azure remote application. We're gonna go ahead and log in with our account here, as you can see. And what's gonna happen is we're actually just presenting a handful of standard applications, a calculator and a couple other tools uh, to this account. So in this case, as soon as I log in with my corporate credentials, we're gonna see an application list that gets prompted based on the default app. So we can see the calculator, command, Internet Explorer, and Paint. So just like any other application I would have on my desktop, we can go ahead and launch Paint. We can actually see here is establishing the session with our remote app session. In a second, we'll be able to expand, show details, and actually show the login of the session, like we can see here. 
Uh, and immediately you can see it launches into that application. The other great thing is now that we have a session established here, we can go back and launch anything else within that session. So we can go launch calculator. You can see it's near instantaneous to run that process as well. This is really great for offering up your line of business applications or your office suite. Again, not only in a production scenario, but also if we're ever looking at uh, leveraging Azure for disaster recovery. This wraps up our session on Azure Remote App. Thank you for attending our session today on Azure Remote App. My name is Rich Lilly. You can reach me at rlilly at projectleadership.net or on Twitter at, at @richlilly.